So here's the uh, Trek Shift 2. It's an older style um, 3x7 uh, drive train. Train. I took the front derailleur off yesterday. The um, I removed the pedals to get put on the new kit. I removed the crank arm with the crank puller. I took the, the, the uh, rear wheel into the bike shop. They said that the nipples were frozen, so they can't really true it. It's only off by about two mils, so it shouldn't be a big deal. If it's something that the owner um, wants to deal with in the future, they can always pick up for like 50 bucks or something. Just a new 26 inch rear wheel. Uh, they're very, very common, and you can probably get them used uh, nearly anywhere, uh, especially here in Oregon. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, put this motor on. So we're down here at the bottom bracket, and I have this uh, bottom bracket removal tool. This is for the, uh, the square tapered bottom bracket, not a hollow tech style bottom bracket. And I have a vice grip around it because I don't have a, a crescent wrench big enough to fit around this. Now, the drive side is going to be reverse threaded, so righty loosey, lefty tighty. So this is going to go into here like this, and then I zip tied this from coming open. And you'll give this a few whacks. And then this will come right off. I did put some WD-40 on here a few minutes ago to uh, try to loosen it up. Now we just have to get the other side. Here we are at the uh, non-drive side. This is going to be normal threaded. So righty tighty lefty loosey. Oh, this is, this is already loose. How about that? All good. I'm gonna clean that up and get this motor on. Oh yeah. So what's happening is there's this piece under here that the motor can't fit around. This little thing that I showed in video one, that uh, guides the cables under the bottom bracket. The motor is too tight to the frame so this will get removed. Put this aside. These things are not super easy to come by, so make sure that you save it with the retained screw. Now, this should go in uh, just fine. So we're down here, we've got this motor put on the bottom bracket. Now, you need to get, um, the kit comes with this little locking mechanism. Um, which keeps the motor from rotating. Uh, there were some small bolts, but um, the gap, there's just too big of a gap between this and the motor uh, for whatever reason. Could be the size of this bottom bracket. I think this is probably a 72 or a 73 mil instead of a 68, 73 mil. So uh, you can buy spacers. I just used, um, these Presta valve, uh, the little little spinny doohickeys you put on your Presta valves uh, for your tires, they fit around well, and then a lock nut. So I have the longer screws that came with the kit, a lock nut washer, a locking washer, and then two of these, uh, and that will get the spacing right. I will take some Loctite, some blue, and put that on here um, just to keep this secure and uh, not moving around. This is the supplied wrench that comes with the kit. I'm going to give it a few taps. And then we have this last ring. I'll put some more um, thread lock on the inside of this. And this is all normal threaded. 
That barely goes on there. Oh, watch. It's just not... It's just not deep enough. So I finally got that outer locking ring on and what happened was because this is a 73 mil bottom bracket, there's not a lot of thread left on the Bafang um, drive shaft that comes through here. So I needed to tighten down the inner locking ring another like half turn or so to get those grooves to really sit into the frame to get this uh, locking, this, uh, this pronged washer here as flush against the frame as possible which gave me just an extra um, thread to get this thing on and then a couple taps with the uh, couple taps with the hammer to get uh, to get this on snug now this isn't as on snug as like my my other bike that has a 68 mil uh, with bottom bracket but I think it'll do the trick it's really on there I don't think it's gonna go anywhere I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of these smudges off flip the bike around and I'll go ahead and show you how I install the chain and the, um, the, the sprocket. So we're over here on the uh, drive side. We're going to go ahead and put in this uh, 44 tooth sprocket. I imagine that it goes um, like this. It comes with these bolts with a uh, red thread lock on it, which is really nice. And they will take a uh, four mil Allen key and we will apply them in a uh, star pattern. Put this chain guard on with some of these screws. Mine didn't come with this, but that's okay. I probably wouldn't have used it, but it's nice to have. Crank arm, bolt with thread lock. Make sure when you do this that the crank arms are opposing each other. You don't want to put them on kind of kind of crooked. One going this way, the other one going this way. You have to make sure that they're facing away from each other. You'll hop on the bike and realize that your crank arms aren't, aren't parallel. And then this says 38 Newton meters. What's going on guys? So uh, something interesting happened. I have this new chain that I bought. However, when I put it on there, that rear derailleur is really extending out and I'm not even, I'm only in like the fourth cog in the rear cassette. So I don't think that this new chain is long enough even though it's made for an eight speed. So here's a quick trip tip to determine if your chain is the correct length or not. What you do is if you have the factory chain, which is right here, you can compare the lengths to determine if it's the right length or you have the right number of links. Now keep in mind the factory chain might be stretched out, so you do want to make sure that you line up link for link um, uh, the actual chain because they can stretch quite um, substantially. So. Let's see if my intuition is correct uh, that this new chain is too short. So as we see here, the uh, old chain was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links longer. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, part of this old chain um, actually what I think I'm going to do is just take this master link and I'm going to use this master link to um, on the uh, on the old chain I'm not even going to try and use this this chain here I'll give it to the uh, owner to use later if they wish uh, however I'm not going to use it now I do need to break this link you can't use uh, you can't use this outer link, so 
I'm gonna go ahead, break this link, get this chain installed, get the pedals put on. Uh, remember, there's regular threaded pedals on the drive side, reverse threaded pedal on the, on the other side, and then we'll go ahead and get this thing wired up. So just a quick uh, walk around. Um, what I did so far with the bike was I put these uh, front fenders on here. These are the Planet Bike Cascadia fenders. Just your typical mounts, a uh, little fork crown mount. Also did it in the rear as well. Uh, I didn't, I just did that while I recharged the, the camera. Then I got this PDX um, kickstand put on. So um, we have the Bafang um, motor mounted, we have the crank arms, we have the pedals, we have the fenders, we have the, um, the kickstand. So now I'm going to do the display and some of the wiring. And then last but not least, I'll do the rear rack with the uh, battery mounted to the rear rack. So let's go ahead and get this wiring done. I'm gonna use some dielectric grease. This uh, just helps keep water out of the um, electrical seals. Uh, you just kind of put a little in there like that. Just a little dab will do ya. And uh, that'll help improve the connection. Throttle goes to throttle. Um, screen and uh, <clears throat> thumb control go to that. And then last but not least, I love how all this is color-coordinated. Another little dab on here. You don't need a whole lot. These two are for the brake, um, the brake shutoff. This, that's what this is for. I'm not putting this brake shutoff on here because you're not going to be pedaling when you're braking anyway. So it's not something that's needed. I will put on the... Um, the shift cut off so when you shift the motor will cut off and that'll prevent you from like snapping a chain because you'll be putting all this power during the drive train so let's go ahead i'm going to change um, camera positions here we're going to get this thing all wired up real quick i'm going to show you guys how i wrap up and, and make this look neat uh part of it is making sure that you just have these um wires kind of Follow along the path of the existing wires, uh, nothing weird, mixed up. And then it comes with this. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. kind of look at that I just kind of tuck tuck that up in there so all the wires are the same length then we'll just go ahead and keep wrapping this this is gonna look really good what's going on uh, I have finished the Bafang install on this track so I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the final product
Up here at the cockpit, we just have some two screws that come with the kit that allow you to mount this really cool LED display. Attached to the LED display is this, um, changes the, uh, the settings, the pedal assist settings, power on and off. So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Really, really cool uh, screen here. I did change it to um, Imperial instead of Standard. I put the thumb throttle over here on this side um, just because with the shifter and everything and these interesting tapered bars, uh, there's just not enough room to have the controls and the throttle on one side so I went ahead and put the throttle on the other side. We did a super super clean install. Um, lines coming down again we're trying to trace these lines along with the original uh, brake and shifter hoses just to you don't want a lot of crossover you know like this see how this crosses over you want these lines to really follow the natural path of the um, of the shifter. So here I've combined the, the rear derailleur shifter and the throttle into one with this really cool wrap that they give you. And then that comes down here. Now these um, unused ends are for the brake cutoff sensors so when you brake the motor shuts off. But for me when I'm braking, I'm not pedaling, so the motor's already going to be shut off. So I just went ahead and left them capped. I put a little dielectric grease under here and then just capped them. They're pretty good. You could put a little um, shrink wrap on there to keep them in tight, but I'm happy with that. And then, of course, always, always, always dielectric grease and, let's see if that'll focus, and shrink wrap on all your connectors. Uh, this is the main connector. I did, let's see if this will focus. I did put this light on. It's not quite working yet. I'm not sure how to get it to work. Uh, if it works, great. Otherwise, I will discontinue it. But I did take that and put that as an internal routing through the down tube. I have this adjustable, removable uh, zip tie here to, just to keep that line in place. Another non-adjustable and then there is a uh, brazon down here, so I went ahead and this is the brake line and other uh, lines all connected comes up here. I went ahead and put this. Now you will need a torque, a torque, uh, torque style Allen key for this to put this on. This will tell you the speed. This this is the speedometer. This will tell you how fast you're going. See how it, it blinks every time it crosses over. Real easy, just zip tie, with big zip ties, not the small ones. You don't want that thing moving. And then zip tying this on in two locations because you don't want this underneath necessarily because that's where all the dirt and grime is going to be. And you want to make sure this isn't routed on the inside because you don't want that to uh, get caught up in the wheel. Routing comes up through this triangle here, again wrapped up, zip tied, and I made this custom rack. This is a rack with a solid base, and I went ahead and drilled drilled some holes in here um, to mount the uh, to mount the battery. So that's the final kit. Let's go ahead and ride this bad boy.